Honor and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Racha Kodash, the honest of venerable apostles and elders of great millstone who rule well. My peace and blessings to the Lord's elect, the house of David. All right, so Brother Haran coming back at you with another lesson, low willing to be edifying and uplifting unto the elect. All right, and um, you know, I don't have really, I don't really have a, a topic per se, but you know, I just want to roll through the spirit, you know, see whatever the Lord uh, gives me. All right, and um, today is a uh, so-called April uh, 13th, all right, Thursday, April 13th, uh, 2023, all right, the hopeful year where all the prophecies be fulfilled. All right, and um, you know, we the hopeful elect are actually looking forward to all the prophecies being fulfilled because it only favors us. Okay, that means that Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai's uh, ultimate prophecy of bringing the children of Israel, starting with the elect, back into our land, all right, is, is, is almost here. Okay, that also means that the destruction, all right, of the wicked is almost, is also almost here. Okay, so we're looking at fulfillment of prophecies on all levels. That's why this year, all right, it's coined the hopeful year where all the prophecies, all right, be fulfilled or all the prophecies come to pass. Okay, and, um, you know, just uh, going through the spirit, like I said, I'm going to try to see if I can get a, a couple of precepts as well, you know, as I go along with this. All right, just one second here. Let me pull out my other phone. All right, so I can gather some precepts. Okay, where's the shit? Bear with me, brothers. Trying to get my other, my other phone here. All right, but hey, you know, as I'm getting my phone, you know, just flowing through the spirit, think about, you know, where we're at right now, okay, in prophecy, you know, looking at what's going on in, in Europe, all right, and it's all brewing to ultimately the land of Israel is going to get hit. And I was actually meditating on that today of, um, you know, how, you know, Esau has pretty much defiled our land. Okay, this, this is known as the Holy Land, but when you go into what, what actually they're doing over there, is a whole bunch of debauchery, you know, as a whole bunch of debauchery, okay, which is all part of um, the time of the Gentiles being fulfilled. Okay, because when you go into the land of Israel, there's a lot of spiritually high holy places, all right, that have, that hold, you know, um, significance in our nation. Okay, like, um, you know, the land of, uh, of Jerusalem, Okay, Jerusalem itself, all right, which was uh, also known as um, David's city. Okay, um, look at Bethlehem, which is where our Lord was born. Okay, um, you know, looking at Na Nazareth, which is where he grew up. All right, these are all places, you know, that's in the land of Israel. But you wouldn't even know that the Lord actually dwelt over there if you were to go there today. Okay, most for the most part, all right, that land is, is defiled, right? You know, you got heathens living there, number one. Number two, not only are they, not only are they living there, but they're also uh, not keeping it, you know, uh, uh, holy. You know, they're not keeping it holy as the Lord has instructed for that land to be kept. All right. And when you look at certain parts of the land of Israel, okay, that is filled with, you know, um, I almost busted my ass. <laughs> That is filled with, um, you know, these these high level uh, uh, um, spots. For example, the the Sea of Galilee. All right, the Sea of Galilee. All right, there was a lot of um, spiritual acts that happened over there. You know, there's uh, a lot of miracles that happened in, in during the sea around the Sea of Galilee. All right, and uh, even till today. Okay, that those um, there's certain places. All right, around the Sea of Galilee, I'll give you two names. We have. Um, Hamath, all right, Hamath is pretty much, uh, I believe, I believe is right around like the southern part of Galilee, if I'm not mistaken. All right, so you had a place like uh, Hamath, uh, I believe it was Hamath uh, Gil Gil Gilboa, I think, or Gilba, Gilba, if I'm not mistaken. All right, and then you had Hamath Tiberius, okay? Now, Hamath Tiberius, all right, I'm going to read a little bit about it. Okay, and um, just to show you, 
that these places carry some very high, high level energy, man. All right. Let me see if I could pull this up real quick. All right. There you go. Hamath Gader. Okay. And I'm going to read just a little bit about it just to show you why the Lord uh, specifically took that land and gave it to the land, the, the children of Israel. Okay. So Hamath Gader, it says Hamath Gader is located about five miles southeast of the Sea of Galilee, some 12 and a half miles from Tiberias in the Yermak River Valley on the Israel-Jordan border. All right, so we're looking at, it says what, uh, southeast of the Sea of Galilee. So you have the Sea of Galilee, which is up north, right, of the land of Israel. And then it will be what? He says southeast, so it will be down to the right, a little bit, just not too far, about five miles down from the Sea of Galilee, and then about 12 and a half miles from Tiberias, which Tiberias would be southwest of the Sea of Galilee. Okay? So you're going to go up across over to the north. All right? North, uh, northwest if you are in the, in the land of uh, Hamath Gader. Okay? Uh, and it says at, around the, uh, in the Yarmuk River Valley on the southern, uh, on the Israel border or Israel Jordan border. So that's also down, like I said, down southeast, right? Of, uh, of um of uh the the sea of galilee okay it says the site has uh was inhabited or inhabited between the years 3100 and 20 2350 bc and best known for its mineral baths see so when the lord promised us that he's gonna give uh he's gonna send us into a land that floweth with milk and honey all right he wasn't kidding all right now that does, does that mean that 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 land was literally flowing with milk and honey? No, but it represents how how um, the uh, the land was actually uh, uh, good for cultivation. Anything and everything that you may need, all right, you you could get in that land. Okay, it, it was it was uh, uh, mixed. It was it was high in in, in minerals. You know the the the, the ground was uh, very good for um, growing crops. All right, it was good for growing crops. You know what I'm saying? Um, what else? So many different uh, benefits of living in the land of Israel. Okay? So let's continue. <laughs> I'm, in, I'm in the woods right now, but that's okay. All right? So it says... Um, uh, all right? It says, the Romans built an elaborate bath complex here. Okay? Excavations have also revealed that it was popular as a pagan worship center. So there you go. All right, polluting the land. Okay, which is something the Lord Yahweh Bashim Shai specifically told us not to do. Okay, to worship or have these other gods. The Lord told us exclusively, don't do that shit. So why the hell are we doing that shit? Because uh, Israel is a Sadist children. Okay, to, to, to do uh, good, they have no knowledge, but to do evil, Yo, Jake is right there. You know? <laughs> Jake is right there, man. When it comes to wickedness, all right, our people know they, they have no bounds. Yeah, it's like it. All right? I'm trying to use uh, two hands here. One hand for this and one hand for that. All right, but when it comes to wickedness, man, our people have no bounds. Okay? And that's why constantly we've gone through what we've gone through. All right? Yahweh Bashim Yahshua has constantly punished us all right, with these other nations ruling over us, you know, when you have, you're constantly disobeying the Heavenly Father's laws, which are very simple, all right, and you have, so simple that you have all these other nations, you got these Amalekites trying so hard, all right, to take our identity, they can't even keep our laws, man, you know, because it wasn't given to them, all right, it wasn't given to them, Yahweh Bashim Yahshua didn't give them those laws, man, because if, if, if they were righteous people, the shit that's happening in that land wouldn't be happening right now. Right? So the Romans built an elaborate bath complex here, all right, in the land of Hamath Gader, right? It says, excavations have also revealed that it was, it was a popular, or it was popular as a pagan worship center, okay? Defiling the land, all right? And this is also part of why the Lord is going to destroy the land of, uh, of, of Israel, because it's polluted with all these different paganisms and all kinds of different shit going on over there, all right? So it says what? The hottest pool was known as Mayan Hagihon, ha 
Gehen Gehenom, all right? Which is what? Or Hell's Pool. That's what they called it, man. Hell's Pool, all right? It says, uh, the temperature of this natural mineral pool, this is natural, it's not man-made, all right? Is 124 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's just naturally that hot, yeah. Okay, that's that's amazing. And that's all in the land of Israel. That's amazing, man. Right? Natural pool. Natural mineral pool, right? Check this out. In the New Testament times, people flocked to these pools as were those of Hamat, uh, Hamath Tiberius, which we're going to get ab about a little bit too. Right? For their medicinal purposes. See? So the whole earth, all right, but in the land of Israel, all right, the land of um, the, the chosen land, that Yahweh Bashmi Yahweh chose in the, in the book of uh, Second Ezra, I believe. Yeah, all right, in the book of Second Ezra or in the book of Ecclesiasticus, I think it's the book of Second Ezra where it talks about uh, the Lord's um, uh, favorite pit, okay, and it leads you to the land of Israel, okay. He says uh, his, uh, his 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 favorite pit, all right, out of all the pits, all right, the Mosai has chosen him unto him one pit, okay, which is what the land of Israel. Okay, and out of all the people, the Most High has chosen unto himself, all right, one people, which is the land of Israel. I mean, the people of Israel, all right, the 12 tribes of Israel, okay? Out of all the, 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 the animals, the, 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 the birds, the Most High has chosen him, chosen unto him one, one bird, which is the dove, okay? Out of all the flowers, he's chosen him the lily, all right? And so on and so forth, okay? So that's all going into Yahweh Bashmi Al Shai's nature, you know what I'm saying? Certain things that he likes. Certain things he doesn't like, you know. The world likes to portray the heavenly Father like a, like an old robotic, you know, creature somewhere. All right, but we gotta understand that he is a power. Okay, how about Shmi Al Shai? All right, is a power that's to be feared. He he created us, so we do have tendencies of our Father. You know what I'm saying? Well, you you have your favorites. You know, you got certain types of things that you like and other things you don't like. You know what I'm saying? So it's the same thing with the Heavenly Father. All right? So let's continue. I'm going to come to a quick stop here so I could, I could set up real fast. All right, Salakia. All right. So let me just... Oh. There you go. Put it right here. I don't want this shit to fall, but... All right, so let's keep reading. All right, it says, uh, uh, in the New Testament, in the New Testament times, people flocked to these pools as well as those of Hamath Tiberius for their medicinal purposes. Okay, hmm. People came to the Sea of Galilee looking for a miracle cure for their physical ailments. All right, <laughs> today it is still a popular spa not only for people from Israel but also for tourists so just that alone just the land itself what had its own healing properties man you know and that's crazy that's that's like in in in, in modern day terms man, that's badass you know it's like oh shit like your land has all these properties you know and here it is Esau then destroyed all of it you know he turns it into like it says spa a spa place you know people could just come in just to make money you know everything is about money 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 he's taking the Holy Land and turn into a, a, a house of merchandise, pretty much. You know. Let me see if I can find my, my other phone where I could get I could get my precepts. I didn't I didn't take my my scriptures with me. But I think I might have left it in the car. That's not good. All right. So continuing, um, get this. All right, so continuing, this is uh, Hamath Tiberius, right? In Hamath Tiberius, it says, uh, Hamath Tiberius is located just south of the modern city of Tiberius, all right, in the shore of the Sea of Galilee. So let's break that down. All right, let me see. All right, it says, Hamath Tiberius is located just south 
of the modern city of Tiberias. So we remember that Tiberias, when you take the, the, the Sea of Galilee, Tiberias is on the left side, right? About, you know, south but or the west, right on the west of, uh, of the Sea of Galilee, right? So it says, uh, on the shore, on this, it says on, on the shore of the Sea of Galilee. So like I said, right at the shore, okay? On the, on the west side of it, left side, if you're looking at the map. Okay, it says, during the Roman period, the site was very popular, like Hamath Gader, for its min mineral springs, which were known for their healing powers. See that? So, like, that's just, man, let's get that in the book of um, Second Ezra real quick. Uh, let me see if I can pull that up. KJV Bible. All right. Um... There's a book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 5, and, uh, and verse, verse 23, it says, And said, O Lord, that bearest rule of every wood of the earth, and all the trees thereof, thou hast chosen thee one vine. Okay, so Yahweh Bashim Yahushai has rule over everything that you see, all right? Whether it be tr plants, trees, you know, people, water, everything inside the water. All right, in the heavens, all right, everything in the heavens that, that roams, everything that you see, the birds that chirp every morning, all right, the, the, uh, the cock that crows every morning is programmed that way for a reason, all right? Yahweh Bashim Yahushai controls all these things, all right? Yahweh Shai said that what? Um, a sparrow doesn't touch the ground unless it be sanctioned by the Heavenly Father. See what I'm saying? So that's like, <laughs> that's crazy. You know what I'm saying? This is the power we serve, right? It says what? Um, so the Lord that bears rule of every wood of the earth and all the trees. So that, that also cuts Esau's idea of um, the Big Bang Theory. Because this is telling you that the Most High is the one who bears rule over all these things. That means he created these things, man. You, can, you, you, you get to have rule over something that you created. Because now, when you rule something, that means you have power to direct where it goes. Right? When somebody says, I'm your ruler, that means that they guide where, wherever you're going to go. Right? So the Heavenly Father has, uh, what? Uh, jurisdiction over everything that's in existence all right and everything on earth and in heaven dominion power he gave it to his son Yahweh Shai, the man that we worship okay we worship our heavenly father through Yahweh Shai. okay he's the one that the lord is sending back down our big brother to come deliver us all right in this time in this uh in this trouble that we're about to face okay and that's biblical prophecy that's something that these uh these devils don't want to admit but prophecy is going to force you to admit so it's okay all right so, verse 24, And of all the lands of the whole world, thou hast chosen thee one pit, right? And of all the flowers thou, it says, flowers thereof, one lily. And of all the depths of the sea, thou hast filled thee one river. And of all the builded cities, thou hast hallowed Zion unto thyself. Okay? And where does Zion uh, go or dwell? In the land of Israel. Okay, so that's the same pit that the Lord is talking about, uh, that Ezra is talking about here. Okay, because it was a chosen land. It was promised onto our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You know, that this is where your people are going to dwell and this is where I'm going to be with them. Okay, and guess what? We're going to go back to that land because that's, what, that's the land that the Lord promised to the inheritance or the heritage of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, man. All right, and today they're known as the so-called Blacks, Latinos, Native Americans. All right? So this is the whole, the whole controversy is about who the Israelites are because of the promises that comes with it. Okay? So continuing, it says, uh, And of all the fowls that are created, thou hast named thee one dove. And of all the cattle that are made, thou hast provided thee one sheep. So the most highest favorite animal is a sheep. Okay, the most highest favorite bird is what? The, the dove. See? That's why Yahushua mentioned that what? Be uh, harmless as a... Be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove, okay? Because a serpent carries, uh, I believe, the, the highest form of intelligence, okay? And the highest form of intelligence, when you have intelligence, that means you have the ability to discern, right? You, you have the ability to discern what's righteous and what's wicked. And not just discern it, but also be able to what? To go along with the, the right path, the righteous path, okay? Being able to decipher what's right and what's wrong and what path to take. 
right? That's going to be pleasing unto Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. That's intelligence. That's a, the truest form of intelligence. Okay, and that's, I believe, the, uh, the serpent, which is other, uh, otherwise known as a dragon. All right, you have the uh, five um, uh, steps of, of, of intelligence, or of wisdom. Right, you have the uh, the first step, which I believe is the uh, the parrot. Okay, all right, that's the first form, and then you have the the monkey, all right, which is the second form. Okay, and then you got the uh, the frog, which is the third form. Then you got the fourth, which is uh, the owl. Okay, and then you have the fifth, which is the serpent. Okay, and all these stages all show you what form of intelligence you may be on, or what type of wisdom you may have. Right, the first level, which is the parrot, it simply means that once you once you get in contact with some type of wisdom or information, what happens is you you tend to recite it, just like what you hear. You know, in this truth, you know, most of us when we come into this truth, you got your teachers who teach you, and you know sometimes you might end up you know basically parroting everything you learn because yeah you believe it, but you don't really understand it. So you go around saying exactly what you believe. Yo, this is this. That, that's that sweet part. You know, you're parroting everything. That's that sweet part of the uh, of the truth. You know, you haven't really gotten to the bitter part yet. You got you at the sweet part. You see? So everything you hear, oh, yo, we're the Israelites. Oh, this is going to happen. The Lord is coming back for us. Right? We're going to get the kingdom. Everything is about the kingdom. You see? Knowing that you're an Israelite, that's, that's the first step. It's a beautiful thing. Right? And then the next step is what? The, um, the monkey. Right? Because what? Monkey see, monkey do. So everything you see your brother's doing, you start doing it. That's where you start cultivating your character, right? You start modeling yourself after righteousness. See, not only are you speaking these things, but you're actually being these things. That's another level of wisdom that you're on, right? Brothers, is, uh, you know, you change your diet, you know, even the way you go about your life, everything changes. You start modeling yourself after your older brothers who are in this truth, who are, who are leading the, the path of righteousness, right? And the next form is what? Uh, the frog. Right? Sometimes you become, uh, just like the frog, you become stubborn. When you get to a certain level, you know, scriptures tell you that what? Um, uh, uh, wisdom puffeth up. Okay, or knowledge puffeth up. Once you, you start to, you grow in this thing, you start to gain a level of understanding, you become a little, you know, a little complacent, a little stagnant, a little stubborn. You know, if you're not careful, that pride could destroy you. You know, that, that, that knowledge that you're getting could destroy you. You know? And then you have the fourth uh, uh, form of wisdom, which is what? The owl, right? Now you're able to understand dark sayings because what? An owl can see in the dark, you see? They're, able, they're what they call nocturnal. So now that's where um, Second Thess uh, Second Corinthians 2.11 comes in, right? Let's say you should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. You start to see and understand things better. Oh, this prophecy means this. Oh, when these devils say this, this is really what it means. You know, you start going into it. You know, you really understand the prophecies, man. You know, you, you understand the uh, the deep, dark sayings of the scriptures, right? Like it tells you, I believe in the book of uh, the, the book of Ecclesiasticus, all right, it mentions something about, you know, the Lord is going to teach, you know, a young man uh, uh, prudence, you know, uh, roughly paraphrasing, he's going to show him, he's going to teach him uh, uh, the understanding of dark sayings, you know? And then you have the, four, uh, the fifth form, which is the serpent or the dragon, okay? The highest form of intelligence is the serpent. Okay, hence you have, um, you know, brothers who get to a certain level where the way they teach is so deep. You'd be like, damn, that's heavy. You see, he, he's, he's, he, the Lord is dealing with him to the point. Like, look at the, uh, the elders and the apostles, man. You know, the wisdom that they, they, they put forth is so profound. You just be like, damn, there's something so simple. I never thought about it. You see, but the way they bring it out to you for it to make sense, you'd be like, damn, that's, that's the Lord, man. You know, that's the Lord, right? It says, uh, verse 27, Second Ezra chapter 5 and verse 27, it says, And among all the multitude of, of people that, that thou hast gotten, the one people. Okay, so again, these Christians go around teaching that, oh, God loves and we, know, we could all be saved. Well, the scripture is saying one thing, that out of all the multitudes of people that thou hast gotten, uh, thou hast gotten the one people, and unto this people whom thou lovest, Thou gave us a law that is approved of all. See? So who's that talking about? Who were the laws given to? The children of Israel. One people. Okay, the 12 tribes of Israel make up that one people, man. Okay, that nation. Because ultimately we came from one man, Israel, Jacob. Right? Who came from Isaac and who came from Abraham? Right? So that's where the covenant starts. Abraham, Isaac, and then through Jacob, 
which then you have the 12 tribes of Israel, the sons of Israel, period. That's it. Ain't no other nations that, that gets to be a part of that covenant. You know, there ain't no other nations that get to be uh, in the same house as the house of Jacob, man. The Lord is dealing only with the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay, let's get that. All right. Pull that up real quick. Uh, the book of Amos. All right, before this phone dies on me. All right, the book of Amos. Get that. Chapter 9. All right, and verse 11, it says, And in that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen. You hear that? So the tabernacle of David is the house of David. Does that include all these other nations? No. The house of David is so exclusive, it doesn't even include all of Israel, man. But ultimately, through the house of David is where all of Israel will come back. You see? But the, it starts with the house of David. That's the, the foundation, right? The house of David, where Yahushua comes from the house of David. Okay? That's why in, in many times he referenced himself as the son of man. The son of man, the son of man. Who is the son of man? Right? He was letting them know subconsciously, I'm, I'm the son of man. I'm, I come from the line of uh, David. Okay? I am Solomon in the reincarnation. I'm, a, I'm the son of man. You know? Um, so continuing. All right? The son of David, that's Yahushai, right? The son of man. Verse 11, it says, And in that day shall I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen, and the close, it says, and close up the breaches thereof, and I'll raise up his ruins, and will build it as in the days of old. In the, in the days of old, who was in the tabernacle of David, man? The 12 tribes. Okay, after 40 years of war, all right, the, the tribes were put together, all right, underneath, and then the transition into the hands of Solomon. Okay, that was 40 years of peace. And then Solomon went off, and then, he lost the kingdom. The Lord rent the kingdom from his hands. Okay, and then, then you had the split with the southern kingdom and the northern kingdom. Okay, you had Judah, the kingdom of Judah, which is the southern kingdom, and the kingdom of Israel, which is the northern kingdom. Okay? So continuing, this was all during the land of, uh, when we're dwelling in the land of Israel. All right? So continuing, it says, verse 12, that they may possess the remnant of Edom. You see that? So if Edom, if the, all these nations could be a part of this covenant here, then why are we possessing the remnant of Edom? Huh? Which is the land. All right, but ultimately we're gonna possess the people too. Because they're gonna be we're gonna be ruling over them. Right? We're gonna be ruling over them. We're gonna have jurisdiction over the whole entire planet. All right. That means that anyone who's gonna be on this planet who's not part of the house of Israel, we're gonna be ruling over you. In righteousness. Okay? In righteousness. It says what? Um, and all of the heathen which are called by my name saith the Lord Yahweh that doeth this, man. Okay, so this is divine. All right, and nobody could stop this. Not no Vocab Malone, not no Dr. Quaz Brown, not no fucking uh, rabbi approved puff niggas, none of them niggas, man. All these niggas, they're gonna be put to death very soon, ultimately by Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. All these rabbis are hiding in our land, going around perpetrating that they're the people, you're gonna be put to sleep soon. Okay, because that's biblical prophecy. Because of what? You the wicked. All right, period. Uh, so verse 13, it says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord Yahweh, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper. Who's the plowman? Who is uh, during, during slavery? Who was the one in the fields, man? Plowing the ground, sowing the cotton. Who was the one who was uh, in, the, in the railways? Okay, that was all built by Jake, man. And who's been reaping the benefits of that shit? Like the, the term that they have today, oh, you're, you're, you, you are reaping off the, your, your forefathers, man, right? These people today are reaping off the system that they built, right? Which was built by Jake, man, upon the backs of our ancestors, okay? All the heavy lifting, all the work, all these big ass hotels and buildings, the White House and this building and that building, and this, it was all built by Jake, okay? Just like how we made ancient Egypt great, we made America great, man. Because prior to slavery, this place wasn't all that. Okay? It was the backs of, of, of our ancestors that made this place become what it is. Even going into the military, going into war, it was Jake's expertise that was helping these Edomites over there, man. When you look at um, um, war tactics, they learned a lot of these things from Jake. When you look at what, what uh, in, the, in the sports world, the Olympics, when you look at the Olympic runners and all these Olympic sports athletes that make America's name stand out, it's all Jake, man. You know what I'm saying? All these great, great athletes and, you know, uh, 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 speakers and all these different people that have made America great, man. It was all Jake. All right? It was all Jake, man. Esau don't got that kind of power. But see, they, they have the power to take it from us. Right? 
You know, they got the power to take it from us, but they ain't got the true power, right? They ain't got the true power, okay? I think this shit turned off. There you go. All right, so let's continue. It says, so it says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord Yahweh, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes with uh, him that soweth, soweth seed, and the mountains shall drop uh, sweet wine and all his hills shall melt and I'll bring again the captivity of my people of Israel huh yeah my people of Israel and they shall build the waste cities and inhabit them and they shall plant vineyards and drink the wine thereof they shall also make gardens and eat the fruit thereof that's what a form of rulership over the whole entire earth man okay and I'll plant them upon their land the land of what the land of Israel the Lord is the one who's going to put us there we're not going to open up no 1948 Balfour Declaration bullshit. No, Yahweh Bashim is going to be the one to start this thing, man. He's going to be the one to put us over there. We can't go there on our own power. So whoever's in that land, they're going to be taken out. They're going to be taken out, right? And I will plant them upon their land, and they shall no more be pulled up out of their land, which I, I have given them, saith the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. So we are going back into our land, man. This ain't our peace. America is not our land. Africa is not our land. The land of Israel is our land. You understand? And how about Shemiel Shai is going to put us right back where we came from. All right? And this time we're going to rule the whole entire planet Earth from that place, man. We're going to rule the, all, of, all of the universe. All right? As I'm looking up in the, in the heavens, man, you know, you see some, some, some clouds. Well, no clouds, really. But, you know, some lights, you know, looking up in the firmament. All right? Beautiful. You know, and the weather's kind of nice out here, too. So, you know, I'm just out here just enjoying it. You know, it's dark. But, you know, we got the light, we got the true light, all right? But yeah, man, you know, just through the spirit, I just wanted to bring that out, you know, as I was reading this book here, you know, um, it sparked my spirit, you know, and I decided, you know, I just come out and do a walk and talk through the spirit, see where it goes, you know what I'm saying? Because we are in those times, man, and, and, and these prophecies are going to start picking up more and more, all right? You're going to start seeing a lot of Israelites referring to themselves as Israelites and not no black, Latino, Native American bullshit. All right, and very soon, the name Israel is going to be the, the, the most talked about, most mentioned name. It's going to be a household name, man. And guess what? The men, the true men of the Lord, starting from our elders and apostles of Great Millstone on down, is going to be in the forefront of all of this. All right? That's why the scripture says what? That the Lord said he's going to give us a uh, fame, our right? name and a fame in the land where we were put to shit. Okay? So that time is coming, man. And, and how does fame happen? By miracles. Okay? The miracles of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai provoke that fame because when people see it they're like oh shit it's unbelievable and they're gonna hear us calling upon you how about shimmy out shy yo man it's about to get crazy out here but that name israel versus esau is going to be the talk of the town very soon everywhere you go is going to be that thing everyone is going to want to tune in to watch oh, what's going to happen oh shit yo you know and you're going to see the power of your how about shimmy out shy all these other nations going to do the same thing man they're about to tune in to watch the glory of your how about shimmy how shy <laughs> all right hey let's get it all right. So, yeah, man, I'm going to leave it off there. Lord willing, you've been edified. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechakodash, the water Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. And until next time, Shalom.